Hey, Robert. Yes, Chris. What's a pirate's favorite sock? Well, I find out in this review. Welcome to the Cine Fanatics. My name's Robert Adams. I'm Chris Adams. And today we got a spoiler-free review for Argyle. Oh, I get it. That works. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, went to go see Argyle. Here's our uh, spoiler-free thoughts. It's okay movie. Is it? Yeah, oh, it's a movie. Go check it out. There Thank you, you for watching All our right, review. Right. We will see. Anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so director Matthew Vaughn bringing this one in. We know him from Kingsman movies, from uh, X-Men, X-Men First, First Class. Class. Uh, just He just all around does... Oh, well, Kick-Ass also. He's done, like, comic book fair Mm -hmm. all over the place. Yeah, most all of his movies have been somewhat based off of a comic book at some point. Very capable director. Yeah. And he's bringing in this movie. Basically, it's an espionage flick, but it's also kind of mixed with... I don't know if any of you out there, maybe you've seen a little movie called Stranger Than Fiction, where you kind of get this idea that... There's a there's a story being written, but how much does it play into real life and the back and the forth and the twists and the turns to it all? Um, that's kind of what you got with this movie. Uh, premise wise, a lot of fun. Yeah, I kind of think like I was saying in like the out of the theater reaction that if you like Kingsman, you're gonna like yeah. this because it is very similar uh, down to like a big fight scene with like the colored smoke, just like they did in the first Kingsman movie. <laughs> Yeah, without the heads popping. So, like, this is PG-13. It doesn't have the the R-rated uh, blood and, like, kind of, like, the some of the gore that they had There's in the Kingsman movies. N- no church scene in this one where a bunch of people are uh, killing each other. While Freebird plays. Yeah. Not that is a great scene. That is a that is a very well-made action so. scene. I love that scene. But, anyways. Uh, yeah, this is definitely, it still has that Matthew Vaughn flair. style. Yeah, the flair to it. Like, he's one of those, like, you, you can recognize his movies now. He, he's got the thing that, like, stuff that sing- singles him out as a movie he's directing. Yeah. Like, Tarantino's always got this spinning around the and table feet. and feet. and <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so you see that here from Matthew Vaughn. And, yeah, he also has a really good affinity for writing really good and entertaining spy movies. Just yeah. like the Kingsman movies. Um, except for maybe that last one. Mm. But this one, this one does have all those same elements of just a really uh, – it, it is a very well-written movie. Um, I will say right off the top, before I get into like a whole lot of the positives, there are, there are some negatives that I have towards this, which is there are places. You might have heard this from other reviewers. Um, I like to try to stay away from other reviewers who get to see it a little bit earlier than us, so I can form my own opinion. But I have heard a few things from other people, and it does ring true here. Uh, it is a little drawn out in places. There are places where it kind of meanders a little bit and... Uh, I do think that the movie probably could have shaved about 15 minutes or so off of its runtime, and it probably would have been just fine if it kind of hit that right at that two-hour mark. Um, there, there are moments where it kind of uh, lingers a little bit and kind of does this convoluted uh, back-and-forth thing. Um, I do love movies that have twists and turns in it, and this movie does have, golly, a handful of them <laughs> just all over the place. Uh, there are times, though, where... Those twists and turns can maybe be a bit too much, if that makes sense. Uh, it, it's weird. It's a weird dichotomy that I'm at because I like it, but I kind of also was like, oh, okay, okay, I got it. Um, without spoiling it, I mean, there are elements of, like, for example, spy, double spy, double, double spy, and it like it bounces back and forth a lot throughout the Triple, entirety. Triple, double, of burger spy. Yeah, and... I, I'm not a huge fan of those generally, just because yeah. I'm like, just tell me what's going on. I want to know who's who's a spy, who's not a spy, who's working for who, who's like, I don't like these flip-flop well, things there, all the there time. There are obviously people out there with legitimate issues where it comes time to focus on certain things, and if you're doing too much back and forth, you could lose somebody who just can't quite keep focused all the time. Yes. <laughs> um, so the... Well, that's not the vast majority of moviegoers. Not everybody has that that situation. There are some that do. Yeah, because I'm watching it. I'm like, I I don't care anymore. Who was like, who was there and doing what and why were they and who? I was like, and especially like in a movie, 
one of the things for, specifically for that is being able to grab your audience and make the audience care yeah. when you start doing stuff like that. And I don't know, for me, like there's parts of this movie that I really liked that r- was grabbing me and some that I was like, I, I, I don't care. Like just yeah. end it. For for me overall, I would I would say that it was on the cusp of being too much. Too much. Yeah. It was just right there on that line. So if you're out there and you're one of those who might have a hard time focusing on back and forth kind of stuff, like you you're just not a fan of tennis, uh, <laughs> this movie might be right on the line for you. Um, that being said, the moments that this movie has, it, I'm, I'm, this is gonna sound weird trying to convey this thought. They did maybe almost push it too much, but at the same time, I kind of still enjoyed what they did with mm-hmm. it. I'm just kind of all over the place. I think I'm going to have like a more like really solid feel about this like after I go to bed tonight and wake up tomorrow. I also think it'll work a lot better on a rewatch because yeah, after 100%. that rewatch, you now know what this movie is doing and the direction it goes. You're not yeah. sitting here like, just tell me what's going on. You already know that. So then you're able to watch it for the enjoyment of being able to watch the movie without... Yeah having to figure everything out. Now we get into some of the positive stuff, unless you have another negative that you would like to say. Not really. That's that's roughly about it for me. Uh, some of the positive stuff, just everybody in the movie. Just one, the entire cast was a, a whole lot of fun. This is a stacked cast, and Matthew Vaughn Matthew Vaughn's done a good job at getting good quality talent for these movies and just shoving all of them into a movie. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, kudos to this, especially like you get the characters uh, that Henry Cavill and um, John Cena are playing. Yeah, the two of them like they I need a whole nother movie with them. too. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, I want to see them as those characters in a full fledged movie because they're they're essentially playing the characters from the book that's being written. Yeah. Um, and so we see them whenever they're referencing a story that's happening in the book. But otherwise they're they're not real characters there that we're actively following throughout the course of the movie. Yeah. And I want to see that because those two were just, they were a delight to watch. Can we get like a literal spinoff of Henry Cavill in that crazy eraser head haircut? Or it's the haircut from the dude from Liar Liar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the, that haircut was just oh, awful. <laughs> but man, uh, a lot of people... I think there's some people out there that would call... Uh, I don't know why I'm judging someone's hair. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, there's some people out there that would call these this cast and the roles they play delicious. I don't know that I would use that term, usually speaking, but I see where they're coming from. Yeah. Uh, it's just... It's a good cast. I just love, like, every... Like, you got Catherine O'Hara in there. Just... Catherine s- O'Hara, Brian Cranston. Everyone is chewing up the scenery that they're in. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got your main your main characters though. You got Bryce Dallas Howard and Sam Rockwell, and they they're just an absolute fun pair together. Um, so Sam Rockwell plays over the top very well. He does. I mean, looking at like his Justin Hammer from Iron Man Two, mm-hmm. it's that over the topness. That was a little more over the top than what he does in this movie, but yeah. it's still a fun character to watch. Yeah, and then of course Bryce Dallas Howard is she's she's an icon at this point. I mean. She's hitting the director's seat following kind of in her dad's footsteps, both being an actor and a director. Mm -hmm. And then just still coming back to the stage, basically coming out in front of the camera and still putting on a fantastic show. I mean, obviously she's been doing the Jurassic World movies as of recent, but in this situation, this is like an entirely different role than anything. I feel like we've seen Bryce Dallas Howard do before. And yeah, I think it's, I think it's been a lot of, it was a lot of fun watching her in this role. Yeah, um, I think she does a phenomenal job in this. Um, and then you got like some of the mainstays, like from Matthew Vaughn, of course. You got Samuel L. Jackson in there, which I mean, honestly, I don't think he does too much except sit there and watch like TV. He, <laughs> but he he <laughs> signed on to this movie to play himself. Yeah, um, and I mean, he's he's good at playing himself, basically. Um, not in the DJ Khaled way, but. What more could you want from Samuel L. Jackson? Yeah. He's just having fun in his career now. Let him have fun. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you also got Sophia Batella coming back, uh, which she also plays a really good, intriguing character. In I'm this. so glad to see her in a good movie. <laughs> yes. That's that's another thing, too. She's been having a rough go at it lately. So, For anyone curious out there, this movie is not Rebel Moon. Yeah. Um, 
But otherwise, yeah, stat cast, great effects. Now, yeah. there are, there's definitely some of the effects in this movie that look like it may have been done green screen or possibly even like volume level kind of things. It, there, there's definitely shots where it looks like the actors are not physically in their surroundings. But I feel like in this kind of movie, this adds to the cartoonish nature yeah. of how Matthew Vaughn movies like Kingsman yeah. have the look and the feel of those movies. I was just about to say the whole action sequence at the very beginning of the movie involved Henry Cavill being in a yellow car and doing some crazy car stunts with it. Yeah. Uh, that whole scene very much did not look real, but it very much went in the same style and same vein that Matthew Vaughn does with his Kingsman movies and the kind of uh, level of cartoonishness that those have. Oh, I was going to compare it to a Tony Hawk Pro Skater game, but sure. That too. He was on (laughs) full X Games mode. (laughs) But yeah, uh, that's a lot of fun. That's the thing. This movie is silly. It, it can get aggravating with the double spy thing, but it's a fun movie. And yes, this is one that I'm going to I'm going to enjoy it a lot better on a rewatch yeah. now that I know how everything ends. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's generally just a good time. Um, it's not like breaking a whole lot of new ground, I think, but it's also it's also not like it's not a disappointment in any stretch of the in any stretch of the mind. It's it's a good just a general fun time at the theater, just a solidly fun kind of twisty what's going on kind of a kind of an adventure and i really enjoyed it you know um again i really want to see henry cavill come back with that haircut (laughs) i could also see him come back with a different haircut too (laughs) yeah anyways um, i'm not gonna say anything else about that any final thoughts um generally just a good time just repeating myself generally generally just a good time i mean this is one of those movies where, you know, if you want to go see it, go see it. If you want to wait, I completely understand why you would want to wait. Do what you feel like with this one. It's up to you. We um, don't control your life. We don't control yeah. Although we have a little over 2,000 subscribers. It would be nice to have that kind of power, but probably not. <laughs> uh, for me, I'm sitting at a, a healthy 7 out of 10 on it. Yeah, that's probably what I was going to give it also. Uh, 7 sounds about right for me. Yeah, man, that number goes up if they just kind of shave off about 15 minutes of that runtime. That's bit. what I agree with. And then again, on upon rewatches, I would probably think this movie would be a little bit higher. But yeah. uh, surprisingly right now, this is the uh, my number one movie of the year. So go figure. <laughs> I haven't gone to see any other movie yet this year. Oh, so it's your number one movie of the year already. As so there you go. Solid review yeah. from the Cinefanatics. The number one movie of 2024. As, As of, of right now. February 1st. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, that is going to do it for our review. What did you think of the movie or this review? Let us know down below in the comments. While you're down there, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Do the YouTube things. That's how we thrive and grow over here. Make sure you follow us on social media. We are at The Cinefanatics on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can follow me personally at RCA Reacts on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Letterbox, and YouTube.com slash at RCA Reacts. And you can follow me at Chris Adams MLP on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox, as well as twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. See ya.